So that's looking great. Let's go ahead and launch Pro Tools. And I actually have my headphones plugged in right here into the back of it using the core audio. You can do that in Pro Tools 10, believe it or not. You can use the audio off of there. Uh, just load the demo session. Notice how quickly it loads, by the way. <clears throat> oh, not like a detailed report. I don't know if you can hear it, but I mean, it's fast, super fast, super responsive. I mean, you go somewhere, you press play, and this thing plays. <clears throat> super stable. All of these plugins are running right now. Let's take a look at the uh, system usage. This entire session, and I know it's a demo session, but there's a lot of sidechain compression, channel plugins, a lot of stuff going on in here. I mean, we're barely using 13%, you know, and that's with onboard audio. So once you get an external audio card on there and get your DSP going, this thing will just kill, will just kill everything. So, let's see. I mean, yeah, that's that's pretty much that for this guy. Um, don't know what else I can show you. It's a pretty hefty session on here. So what happens when we insert like uh, I mean, it didn't even hardly skip the beat. Let's, let's just crunch it. Let's destroy it. Let's do what engineers are totally not supposed to do. All right, just kidding. Let's turn this off. Let's quit Pro Tools. So yeah, that is uh, what's happening on the Mac side of things. If we open up Disk Utility, we see all of the drives that are connected to the computer. Got our Lion drive, our Lion backup, storage partition. Uh, this is our Windows drive. Um, Mac can't read those partitions properly, it doesn't know what they're called. Our one terabyte session drive, our one terabyte library drive, and the 500 gigabyte drive that we have in here. <clears throat> now, USB 3, uh, those two blue ports, check this out. I'm gonna plug this cruiser into there. We should see. There it is. And it is working, I mean, it's not a USB 3 drive, but it's it's working because, let's go back into about this Mac. And let's go back to USB. There it is, it's on the super speed bus. Now it's only doing it at 480 megabytes per second because that's not a USB 3 device. But a USB 3 device will work now on the front and the rear ports, um, which is pretty awesome. Memory, 8888, 32 gigs installed, 1616, way faster than, uh, you know, any Mac computer has these days. All right, so now, sleep mode. This one's fun. Let's eject my disk, just because we don't need it in there anymore. This is something that every Hackintosh guy hates. And it's really hard to get it working, but I'm going to hit the power button right now. I forgot to pull it out. So because I pulled it out, it took it out of sleep. But uh, this is how long it takes it to get out of sleep mode. Let's do that one more time because it was a little convoluted. We're back in. So let's do that one more time. I'm gonna actually, this time, I'm gonna go start, sleep. Oop. Let's go sleep. Let's turn the light on, and let's see. There we go. So everything is off.
the computer is not using, it's using maybe like five watts of energy right now. Fans are off, you know, it's not doing anything. And we just merely walk up to here, press the space bar, light comes on, and within a matter of 15 seconds or so, we should be out of sleep mode and back in business. There you go. Um, let's see. Nothing else I really got to show you, I think. Uh, I got your HDSPE drivers installed already. They're not doing anything because there's no cards plugged in. They're just immediately closing because they don't know what to be looking at. So let's go ahead and restart. Sometimes it takes it just a second to restart. We do have seven hard drives plugged in, and it has to unmount each one. Um, and sometimes it takes it a second. We have speed step working. We have it throttling. I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about when we go to the Windows side. I think you'll be very impressed. So it's shut down. Um, and because I reset it, I restarted it, it's going to come back up. And I will show you what the processor is at. To go to Windows, again, when we get to this screen with the Tinkerbell, we hit any key, and it opens up all the other options, and we go to Windows. This one. Or you can go to line backup. Don't recommend going there. That's only for when things hit the fan. The way this drive is set up, your main system drive, this is an exact copy of that. Okay? So if you have an epic disaster, you're in the middle of a session, something happens, it breaks, you could just literally go into here. You'll have Pro Tools. You have it the way that I gave it to you. Probably won't have all your plugins, but your libraries, your sessions, all of that will still be accessible. But let's go ahead and go into Windows right now. Oh, it had a lot of updates it was doing last time I shut it down. That's why it's doing all this. <clears throat> oh, that's, I'm sorry. It's doing that because it was applying the updates. We got to go back into Windows real quick. Fear not. I love that logo. Blah, blah, blah. Here's our... HDSP stuff. I think I may have uninstalled it. Maybe not. All right. So just so you see what I'm talking about, real temp GT, great piece of software, gives you the temperatures. That is our frequency, 4.7 gigahertz. That's the load right now. Um. Those are the temperatures. Now, we should notice, ah, notice, it is now changing the frequency. Because now it's done loading everything it's got to load. When the frequency changes, drops down, the temperature drops down. Increasing the longevity of your CPU and all of your hardware. Luckily, though, it's smart enough, Intel was smart enough to do this. I'm just going to run a super quick heat up phase. So you can see that we're totally stable on these settings. Um, let's just do a blend test. So right now, 
our processor is loaded 100%. With that giant cooler we have on it, we're going to hit maybe, I mean, the most I've hit so far, I think, was 62 degrees. And that is totally, totally acceptable given the overclock. You know, we went from 3.8 to 4. Point, almost 4.8 gigahertz. So, um, the heat up phase is about 20% done, but you'll see that it will not exceed, you know, 63 degrees. We can see the maximum right here on those two cores. Maybe at the end of the heat up phase, it'll get closer to 65. Um, it did get a little hotter today since last time I ran the test, but there will not be any problems with this overclock. Uh, voltage is 1.32. Um, which is totally acceptable for this this processor. Um, so yeah, and watch what happens when we stop. It's throttling down all the way down to 1600 megahertz and look how quickly the temperature drops. So rock solid, super stable machine. Everything is working great. Uh, let's go into my computer oh there local disk um i got to do a couple of things to get rid of the hibernate because you don't want to hibernate on this drive because it's using the ssd to hibernate and that's why it looks like there's a little space i'll take care of that before i ship it to you this is your the drive you gave me um it's got two partitions on it uh i didn't you i didn't touch it uh, like you asked me not to so this is what's on that drive. Um, so yeah, that is that. Um, I'm gonna pack this thing up back into this box, which has these. I'm gonna add a little bit of that stuff to it. This is mostly just boxes. In here, you have your hard drive as well, packaged very securely. Everything is nice and tight. Um, but again, most of this is just empty boxes except for your mouse, your keyboard. I added a little padding to the side there so it doesn't get damaged. Um, you know, boxes, manuals, uh, shipping certificate. I mean, all that stuff is in here. And I'm going to close it up today, package it up, and send it your way. And I hope you enjoy it. All right, thanks, guys.